Professor Ma, in 1998 you published a paper on the association of PFO and stroke and uh, a few years later you published on natural history of cryptogenic stroke in PFO patients and cryptogenic stroke without PFO and now you're coming out with another seminal study, the CLOSE study. What is the CLOSE study about? Oh, the CLOSE study is a randomized trial. Um, uh, we performed this study to uh, uh, assess whether uh, PFO closure, blood antiplatelet therapy on one hand and all anticoagulants on the other hand are superior to standard treatment with antiplatelet therapy to prevent stroke recurrence in patients with a cryptogenic stroke and a PFO, but a PFO with a natural septal aneurysm or a PFO with large shunt. And what are the results of CLOSE? Well, the main result of CLOSE is uh, a bit unexpected, but I am very happy uh, uh, with, uh, with this result. In fact, uh, 14 recurrent stroke occur in patients assigned during a mean follow-up of five years. 14 uh, recurrent stroke occurred in patients assigned to antiplatelet therapy and known in patients with assigned to a PFO closure, a highly significant uh, difference. With regard to the comparison of raw anticoagulant with antiplatelet therapy, there was a reduction with the raw anticoagulant, but this reduction was not statistically significant. So the main result is a reduction, major reduction of stroke recurrence with PFO closure plus antiplatelet therapy compared to antiplatelet therapy alone. And why have you been surprised by these results? Uh, what was the evidence to date of PFO closure versus antiplatelet therapy? Well, there have been three previous trials comparing PFO closure to uh, uh, medical treatment. And uh, these trials were formally negative, but there were clues in at least two of them in favor of PFO closure. If you look at the uh, hazard ratios, two of these trials, the PC trial and the uh, RESPECT trial, there was, there was a difference. The difference was not significant. They, they just missed the, the, the statistical significance, but the, the, the trend was exactly the same as in, uh, uh, as in our study. So with uh, your new study closed and the old studies, you would uh, if you see a patient, a young patient with a PFO and a cryptogenic stroke, you would send him to the cardiologist for closure? Yes, a young patient with PFO, with cryptogenic stroke, as strictly defined as possible, plus PFO and atrial septal aneurysm, yes, without, uh, without doubt now. Is there any safety issue of PFO closure? Yes, yeah, the same as in previous trials, that is to say that uh, the rate of major complication of PFO closure, um, the occurrence is about 5, 5 to 6% of patients uh, treated, with both, treated with PFO closure, and the main complication is rhythm disorders, in particular new site of atrial fibrillation. There were 11 cases in, uh, in a closed uh, trial compared to two cases of new site atrial fibrillation in patients treated with antiplatelet therapy. What we don't know is the, the consequences of this atrial fibrillation on the long term. Do they need long-term treatment? Do they provoke stroke? And uh, so we, we need more data on the long term uh, closure provoked uh, mm -hmm. atrial fibrillation. Were the new onset atrial fibrillation uh, permanent or on, only transient? Well, we, we have some transients, but uh, the, these patients have been put on, on anticoagulants and uh, this is the main point because anticoagulant, as you know, has many potential drawbacks and the complications. So the, the, the important point is to know whether this uh, transient uh, atrial fibrillation remains transient and if the, the doctor can remove uh, all treatment and the patient stay in sinus raisin. We don't know, on, we have no information on the long term uh, outcome of this atrial fibrillation. In close, we don't have yet because we have the data, but I don't have yet the data to, to show you. Mm -hmm. PFO closure is also said to reduce headache, especially migraine with aura. 
Have you assessed also migraine headaches in your patients? Yes, there is another trial in the trial because we, uh, we recorded uh, the, the, the prevalence of migraine with and without URI in, in, according to the criteria of the International Headache Society and patients were um, asked whether they are attacks of migraine at each follow-up visit. But I, I don't have the result uh, for now. <laughs> Do you think... Uh, your close trial will, will, will also change the management of patients with cryptogenic stroke and PFO who are elderly? Well, we have no data in patients uh, above 60 years of age and we have no randomized trials in these, the, in these patients. Um, so we can give recommendation about uh, PFO closure in these patients. But, uh, well, this uh, will be a discussion in an individual case because uh, we can imagine a patient with no risk factors, uh, no cause of stroke, uh, with a particularly uh, thorough uh, etiological workup and recurrent stroke uh, with uh, the only potential, potential cause uh, with the PFO. Well, the, the, the possibility to close a PFO has to be discussed on an individual basis. The problem with the elderly is that the probability that the PFO is related to stroke decreases uh, when you, you are getting older and older, uh, because you, age is a major factor of the relationship between PFO and stroke. Okay, thank you very much, Jean-Louis Ma, mm -hmm. for this uh, seminal study that will change secondary prevention in cryptogenic stroke patients with PFO. Thank you. Thank you, Anish.